Hi, this is Scott Ware with Radiance Magazine, which can be found at radiancemagazine.org and at 660 conscious locations in Southern California in print, believe it or not. And also on the expansion network, uh, the Radiance Channel. And I have with me today a special guest. Her name is Jennifer Weber. She wrote the book, Living Guided, Divine Power is Always and Forever with You. She's a, obviously an author, a spiritual teacher, and a life coach. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So your book is called Living Guided, and I assume that means uh, following your intuition, which is divine, and is that the voice of God you're following, or how does that work? Um, I believe it is for me, and that has been something that I've experienced my whole life, um, but I didn't really surrender to it until fairly recently, which was about six years ago. Um, and it was a process of surrendering. It was like a little bit at a time until I finally just really gave in. Yeah. And isn't it interesting, you know you fully surrendered because rewards start happening in your life. A lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when I really made my big proclamation, you know, actually it was not a very sweet conversation that I was having with God. I actually was really mad at God. And, um, and I think <laughs> that it's funny, you know, it seems like he rewards, you know, whatever your faith is, he even rewards you for having faith that he exists that you can actually be mad at him you know like yes this is what i'm expecting from he, you he can, he can take it know. he can she take can, it she can take it yeah he or she absolutely um, yep. absolutely 100 percent. and um and then i actually finally said okay you know what <laughs> i i can't believe sometimes how i talk to god um i said you take my life go ahead take you take control over it you you know you have um go ahead it's, it's all yours now. I do whatever you say, whatever. And I wasn't really being flippant. I really did mean it, but I, because I felt, you know, I messed it up and, and you obviously, you know, better and um, go ahead, take it on. And, and I swear uh, from that point forward, everything really shifted. I still had lessons to learn. Um, some big ones, sure. uh, but they, it, you know, every lesson that I had to learn, every battle that I felt I had to go through was fought along, you know, alongside with this co-creator here. Right. And I wasn't alone um, from that point forward. Never was. I just didn't get it before. Well, and it sounds like you hit a rock bottom of sorts or you had that dark night of the soul where you're actually mm -hmm. talking to God like that. I mean, Neil Donald Walsh of the Conversations with God books had that experience where he said, fine. And, and then he started asking questions and God was writing back. Sounds like you had a similar experience. I really, really did. Um, you know, I was going through a divorce at the time. It was really, really difficult. More um, when I was with my husband at the time, um, I kept getting messages to leave and because it was getting so difficult and I, I didn't feel I was going to survive that relationship. I'm a very emotional, very sensitive person. And it was really, I mean, to put it, no other way is hurting my soul and it was affecting mm. me physically my heart started having problems and um i had sort of a uh social anxiety that i never had before i felt something was wrong with me because that's all i heard and uh so it was really really breaking down and um I actually went to an emergency room thinking I was having a heart attack because the right side of my body was going numb. I was actually sitting in my office at work and, um, I, and I worked, there were physicians there in a meeting. I actually had a physician come out and, and uh, I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And she said, you don't look very good. I think you probably should go to the hospital. And I did. And it turns out I was having a panic attack and uh I was, Kind of embarrassed actually I, i've had one almost, yeah i know <laughs> almost yeah. would have rather had a heart attack at the time because it was embarrassing I, I thought wow that's it's kind of you know but i was going through a lot of stress and so finally got the the finally gave in and said i i do need to leave you right and um so tell me how and through the process the process was even harder than the decision to leave and the process was tough and i was battling a fierce enemy there and and i thought I don't know if I can survive even this. And I gave in, um, finally gave in. And that's when things shifted. How long after that did you start channeling God? Um, well, I, I channeled God occasionally before then. I would wake up with messages for someone and I would give this message. Um, and, you know, I was always like, oh, they're going to think I'm weird. You know, yeah. I have to say <laughs> to them and, you know, I'm just this normal person who's like 
God talked to you last night and just, Hey, by the way, you know, uh, that job that you're thinking of taking <clears throat> specifically my, my husband at the time had a nephew who was considering going into the police force and he was grappling with this <clears throat> and, um, his other, his, what is, what he really wanted to do was be a teacher. And then I went to sleep and then I woke up in the middle of the night. It's a life or death decision. Tell him not to become a police officer. He will not survive it. He, will, mm. he needs to become a teacher. This is what I designed him for and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then, well, how the heck am I going to tell him that? First of all, his father is a uh, police chief and wants him to go that direction. Mm. And, you know, So I'm going to come and tell him that, no, you're going to be a teacher and because God said. And, you know, um, but when I shared it with him, it was like a load just came off his shoulders. And he's oh, so glad you shared that with me because I can't, I, you know, I've been grappling with this and, mm. and I just so, felt, yeah, that was right. So he needed, it sounded like it was confirmation for something he suspected. It was, it definitely yeah. was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's been happening like that for me, you know, periodically uh, and small incidences like that very far apart but they would happen. So um, you would, you would leave post-it notes on people's doors and cars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be more for people who are close to me, you know, uh, people I felt like could hear this and not feel I'm completely insane. Uh -huh. uh, and, but I couldn't share things. I would get things for strangers or, you know, feelings about what was going on with them. And it was all a bit much, but I wouldn't share those things. Um, but when I did surrender, I felt very, very guided to make certain steps or make certain connections or people would come into my life, my life at, right at the right time when, when they needed to show up and it would, you know, I would have a message from them. And so everything became very, there, there's a lot of serendipity going on there and guidance and I would be at the right place at the right time to have the right job at the right time, the right living space at the right time. And then a new living space would come up. It was just all very, 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 miraculous there's just nothing else to describe it other than that well i know personally that i haven't read your book yet but i know i got to experience a reading from you you are i know you're a great spiritual teacher and life coach because the reading you gave me sounded it, it wasn't quite your voice so I, it, it was it was something coming through very very purely but then we, we kind of hit a snag without going into details uh but in the working out of the snag i had a great realization that you help facilitate. So that's something I appreciate about you that, and I don't know if your book would convey that, but I'm sure people, I assume people can go to your website and, and uh, get a, an appointment with you even over the phone from across the country, across the world. Absolutely. Um, I what, do, what is that website? So it's listen to guidance and that is uh, the word listen, the number two guidance.com. And they can reach out to me via email. My email is on there, Jennifer at listen to guidance. Dot com and yeah we can set up a 10-minute consultation and we can discuss some of the things that people are concerned about and we can go from there and something always comes through um you know i don't try to push it or you know i do connect with the divine as soon as we begin speaking and there is always something that comes through to share with that person even if it's brief so in a 10-minute consultation i feel confident that something's going to come through that they need oh so you offer consultations um, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> that just came through, so why not? Because oh, you, know? you said you said it. Yeah. I just did, and and I I think that would be great. You know, I love to connect with people. If that's how they want to get to know me, just having some conversation with me, um, and even feel if this is the right avenue for them to hear a message, whatever that is, then sure. we can work together uh, fully in an hour or two hour uh, session. But we can have a ten minute conversation from there so i think that would be great that's great I, I, people do like that they like to get a, a feel for someone in that way as well as watching your videos on on your website or reading what you have there okay. uh, but i i just wanted to highlight the fact that you i guess it's the life coach part of you that continued to work out that and 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 figure yes. what that was and and follow it through that was very helpful so thank you for that and and that's uh i just wanted to convey that you're you see it's almost like you have an a an investigator part of you that that likes to solve the mystery yes that's very good that's a good way of putting it um it, it was really through the process of connecting with someone and what they're going through and they're feeling their heart their voice their soul <clears throat> coming through and it's like this it is 
this interaction, this, well, I don't like to say psychic. I don't like to say psychic. I, for one, I don't like to say I predict the future. I can see some things. I will get visions um, for the future for whatever reason. Um, but I don't like saying I am going to predict your future because I do feel very strongly that is co-created and it can shift. We're designing that in the moment and we're well, co-creating that in the moment. Well, plus we'd be denied our free will if there were if there were strong predictions like that. I think if we are given any kind of what feels like a prediction in a reading, it's meant to nudge us or take us down a certain path yes. to guess where we need to go. You know, but ultimately, otherwise, why are we here? Unless we're we're here to be surprised and experience things, not to know what's coming. Oh yeah, I think that's what's great about it. You know, that's what's it's exciting. It's uncomfortable not knowing, and it's scary not knowing. But I don't want anything different. You know, it's like, right. you know, it's like the Christmas presents underneath the, the tree. Um, if they were all just sitting there uh, completely revealed and not wrapped, you know, that's not as beautiful and fun and exciting. So that's the way, you know, that's the way our life is. The presents are there. The gifts are there. Um, uh, but we just don't know what they are yet. So the present is under the wrapping. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it, but the well, present moment is in the unwrapping. Yeah, that's right, right. So, and we'll so, so, what is the meaning of life? Well, I believe. Okay, that's a huge question, right? That can be a whole book, um, and it kind of is. <laughs> in my book, I do kind of uh, start to break that down and uh, why we're here. Uh, that is one of my chapters. Why? Are and, we and I'm asking you because I assume with with these visions, with these with your enhanced intuitive abilities that seem to come out of a dark night of the soul and and just a huge shift you need in your life. I assume you have more answers than the average person. Well, I feel my way into that, and uh, I do grapple with that question a lot, and I have. And uh, what I have been, from what I have seen, and the visions that I've had, and the guidance that I have when I'm speaking with people, is that, okay, so try to make this really long answer, as short as I can. Um, so we're, we're in these bodies as an experience of God experiencing us, in a physical form, meaning now we can, we can touch, we can, we can embrace, we can smell, we can hear, we can feel, we can feel all these senses that in this body, we have this beautiful experience of having. And my, my feeling is that is God's way of experiencing life through us in this beautiful way. We get to know what children are. Children would not exist if there weren't a need for a body. Then, for we have these pure little essences that are children that we get to experience. It's an experiential thing to have a human body. It's also an experiential thing to be on an earth, a planet. And I don't know if you ever watched the show on Netflix, One Strange Rock, but I love that, or This Strange Rock. Um, it, it is really, a bunch of astronauts talking about their experience and of the earth and and the more oh, yeah. they know right the more miraculous they begin to understand that it is the the fact that it is such it is so unlikely that we're here that it it's almost like their answer even from a scientific perspective is this is something bigger than us and we could possibly know um and understand even yes. in our in, even in our understanding of science, it's beyond us. Um, that all being said, I do believe that there are darker forces here. Um, we're part of God's experience and us in the bodily form are to also experience the uh, opposite of love, the opposite of purity um, and to be exposed to that. Overall, I believe the experience is then to come to the point of our enlightened, being that we overcome that as well and so that now we can be in bodily form we can experience the beauty of that the experience of living and of experiencing of loving um and the experience of the beauty of this earth and the aliveness of it um even the difficulty of surviving it um, without having the dark forces that have so much control over us if any at all and then it's like a paradise here is as pie in the sky and you know um, innocent as that sounds i believe that is where we are eventually headed 
and isn't it a, a balance we need to strike because the contrast, the those other forces are necessary. You don't have light without dark. Right. And then it's our up to us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear right. no evil for that way. Although that kind of sounds, I don't know, a little fear-based, but uh, it, it, is that something you cover in the book? It is actually. Without dark, we cannot experience light. And that is something that I do uh, dedicate a chapter to. And it, it is something I speak to throughout the book, actually. It's part of that uh, coming to the conclusion where we overcome that. But, um, you know, basically what we're here to experience is both the good and the bad and, the, you know, the dark and the light um, so that we can also know and appreciate that beauty that we came from that for whatever reason, that other realm, heaven, however you want to call this other realm is untouched by that. And there seems to be some boundary there where it can't cross. And, it, you know, right. but here we are here exposed to it. And that's by design. And so that we can understand and appreciate the purity and the goodness and the beauty of that unconditional space where that doesn't exist. It's, it's knowing who we are down to the core, to our souls. Uh, it all comes down to faith because we can make choices here. Um, we have free will and we can go the, to the dark side, you know, and we can become dark in our, yeah, in our I think in my, we both were used to be Catholic and I think when you talk about faith, for me, the, the word that supplants faith is trust. And that is trust in the divine, the infinite, because when I don't trust and I follow my ego, mm -hmm. uh, things don't go as well. But yeah. when I get in the flow, the flow isn't of my ego. Some people could say, well, that's surrendering. Why would you surrender yourself? Well, actually, it's not really yourself. It's your ego. It's a construct that usually is built from conditioning from parents and clergy and teachers. And isn't necessarily your truest self, your authentic you. Uh, right. But when we let that happen, when we're in the flow, we're happier. Uh, things go well, things go our way more. Yes. And, and it just, it feels better. So that, it, and that to me isn't because of faith as much as trust, trusting in that flow that you, uh, the, you know, that flow will take you where you want to go. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think the word, trust and faith can be you know interchangeable mm. um, absolutely so that is what that trust is it's surrender um you know that basically comes down to well it's like you know i discussed a little bit about making something happen versus allowing and yes. rendering to that and understanding that yeah you are part of it absolutely you're still driving the car it's just that your passenger is a some pretty powerful being there, you know, guiding you along the way, the GPS. That's great. Instead of your ego, which if you were to check out what your ego looks like, well, yeah. not that the ego's all bad. I mean, we need ego to keep us out of harm and, and there's things, but a, a healthy ego to have. But a lot of times we have an out of control ego. It right. has the face of, of fear of things that, that have happened to us yeah. as kids. Uh, something happened to us at seven years old and we're still in our, we're in our thirties, forties, fifties and beyond being dictated by that feeling that happened, that trauma. Yes. Yeah, if we can release that and realize that that's the ego thinking it needs to help us survive something that we don't need to survive, right. uh, there's freedom in, in surrendering to that. There is a huge amount of freedom in surrendering to that. And it isn't something that, oh, you finally get to that point of surrender and you never have to worry about going backwards. <laughs> sure. It's constant. Right constant active thing um because i still um i'll wake up sometimes and all this feeling of like dread and i'm not enough and da, da, da. yes i feel that Happens. you know that is the darker forces and i mean however you want to label this ego mm. too um has all kinds of names you know uh but what that is is it's not it's not the essence of you it's the opposite of that essence of you kind of preventing you from moving forward into the life that you are designed to live. And yeah. the closer that you get to it, when yeah. you're really getting a good taste of what that looks like and start living into it and start going in that direction, sometimes you get sideswiped by those feelings. And my belief and understanding of that is when the closer you are to who you are meant to be and doing the life or living the life that you were meant to live, that'll come in. And it's almost like a test. Like, do you really, really 
think you can do this? Do you really, really feel that you can, are you really, really enough and up to it? And uh, when that happens to me, when I get overcome by some negative uh, self-talk or doubt yeah. or whatever, I just say, I, you know, God is with me. God believes me. I believe in God, you know, however yep. you want to say it's higher power, higher power, spirit, power, spirit, power, spirit power. source. Yeah. Right. I connect immediately. It's an active connection that I'm making because I know that if I indulge in that darker stuff, I'm going to spiral. That's right. You know, and uh, so I, it's like, I'm in this pit and I just got in yeah. there. So I even woke up there. I don't know how I got there. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, where, how did I end up in this pit? I just had a really good night's sleep. And, you know, um, but I know yeah. that I'm not looking at the rope that's behind me. Um, I'm yeah. not looking at the ladder that's behind me. I'm looking at, I'm in a dark pit and how am I going to get out of this? You know, all I need to do is turn toward that surrender, that guidance and say something and go active into that, you know, faith and trust and surrender. God, I know you're with me. God, I know you, you know, you've designed me for a greater life. I've no mm. surrendering to you and you and your guidance. I belong to you. I don't belong to this doubt. And it's like, I just, now I just grabbed onto the rope and yes. now you know, started to hold on to the rung of the ladder and I started to climb myself out. It's always there. I just had my back turned to it. And it, you know, I realize now it's an active thing. Well, and that's why we were incarnated into this 3D world, into this physical world so that we could keep going back. So it's like, we talk about the present all the time and the presence of the present, but there's actually gonna be a thousand opportunities in our lifetime to keep returning to the present and surrendering to that joy of being in the present and being in the now being fully alive because when you're when you're not in the present you're not even alive you're 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 in the past worrying about something or worrying about something in the future or upset about something from the past right. and so actually this life a lot of people think when they get to a certain level the problems are going to be over yeah no. whether they if they if they win the lottery or they make a lot of money in their business or whatever it is but yeah. that's not it's simply not true a lot of wealthy celebrities have said that jim carrey has said that he said if you only knew he said i wish all of you could be rich because you'll see it you're the same person it's mm -hmm. you know so but that is the gift because as i was just uh seeing from uh matthias de stefano a, a spiritual thought leader saying it, reminding us it's never about uh the it's never about the goal there are no goals to achieve. it's about the journey it's about the process that's called living if you want to call it a life lived, well, then you, the period's at the end of the sentence and you're done, then right. what? Right. So if we keep, if we just understand, embody the idea that there's going to be a thousand more moments where we're going to be given the opportunity to fall into one of those pits you're talking about, you'd be yeah. lost for a second. And then, okay, what do I do? And you have the tools, yes. you have the things, the, the cliches that sound like cliches for a while. But in that, when you're in that pit, they're like manna from heaven. Yeah. and help you get out so sure. that's the beauty that's the beauty of life the process the joy of getting to that point and it's sort of like how we forgot when we came into this life we were, our memory was wiped of any past lives mm -hmm. even then we forget who we are we forget we're god we forget we're an individuation of god yes. fell in that pit oh we get to realize it again a thousand more times in this lifetime <laughs> absolutely over and over over and over yeah. but the wonderful thing about that it's like building a muscle um, so the more often you do it, the more you realize how it's just so there readily available to you. Uh, there's a feeling of confidence that begins to really get instilled mm -hmm. in your, you know, your soul. You embody this confidence because, you know, you know, there's a part of you that's a little surprised by it when you're okay, I'm enlightened. Yeah. Now, you know, so that's yeah. going to happen, you know, and then it happens. <laughs> you're like, wait a second. I thought I was enlightened, you know, I thought I was this being that was never going to experience that anymore. Uh, or I thought I made it so I never have to have pain anymore and, and all of that. Um, but the reality is, is that life is still going to throw you stuff and it's still going to, you know, uh, knock you on your, you know, your butt every once in a while. And uh, so that that's when you know, okay, I know I just been knocked on my butt. I know I have things to answer to. I know I have things that are coming against me, um, but I do know that there's always a way out, that I am guided through this maze, whatever it is I'm in at this moment, um, and I know I'll be fine. I know I'll be fine. I may not feel very good. I'm still worried and I'm still anxious and I'm still struggling and I'm still stressed out, 
But at the same time, I'm like, God, I know you're with me. I know you got this. I, I don't know how you got this, but I know you got it. And I'm just going to keep talking to you. And I'm going to keep praying to you, going to keep mm -hmm. uh, that connection going because I know you and I are going to get me out of this. And this too shall pass. Absolutely. He's done it before. He'll do it again and he'll do it again. And so the more times you experience this kind of thing throughout your life, when you're surrendering and you're going to that guidance and then, and you, you're not surrendering, surrendering in a way where you're not doing something, you're doing a heck of a lot. You're just doing it with someone who knows better and more and will get you out of it together. And uh, so the more times you experience that, the more confidence you have that no matter what comes, I'm going to be okay. No matter what comes, I will always be okay. And that confidence comes by doing this over and over and over again, not by not ever having to have this happen, but by yes. doing it over and over again. Well, it sure hopes to have a good, sure helps to have a good spiritual life coach to help you. Yeah. So if people want to get that little consultation from you because they saw it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. how, where can they reach you again? So they can uh, go on my website if they like, want to take a look there. Um, that, is, that is listen, the number two, guidance.com, or just shoot me an email, jennifer at listen, the number two, guidance.com, and uh, let me know sometimes you're available, and we'll connect, and we can have a 10-minute call, and we can go over some stuff and see if I'm the right person for you. Awesome. And can you hold up your book? Yes. So this is Living Guided. Divine power is always and forever with you. And uh, I felt they can get that on your website. Can get it on my website. And it is also available on Amazon. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Um, that This has been a great conversation. And I know we could keep talking, but uh, I know people probably want to get a hold of you, um, read your book. And uh, thank you for what you're doing. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you.